Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the second concert of the series On My Own. I'm Ida Kavafian, and I hold the Nina von Maltzen Chair in Violin Studies at the Curtis Institute in Philadelphia. If you were with us last evening for our opening night, you heard me talk about the need to keep my students motivated during this pandemic. School closed down during spring break and the rest of the year was online. Difficult for all of us. And of course the students were isolated, um, usually in their homes with their families, but isolated completely from their friends and their music and their audiences. So I wanted to keep them looking forward, looking ahead, uh, keep them inspired. And so I created this series called On My Own to show what they could do just by themselves in isolation uh, with the power of music. I'd like to thank the Violin Channel for presenting this series, for their interest in it and for their support to my students, it was a great boost to them and really kept them going. Tonight's program opens with quintessential solo violin music, and that is one of the sonatas by Bach, the second sonata in A minor. It'll, it will be performed for you by Jenny Jin, a violinist from Seoul, Korea. And the work is in four movements and very classic, slow, fast, slow, fast. But watch for the Andante. That third movement is one of the most heartfelt, most beautiful movements of any music anywhere. And Jenny d does a beautiful job expressing it. The next piece on the program is the Isai Sonata Number no. 6. And this will be performed by Danny Jin, of Seoul, Korea. I like to think of the Isai Sixth as the most intense and one of the most, if not the most difficult of the six Isai Sonatas. It's short and it is packed full of the most difficult technical challenges you can imagine on the violin. Danny does a beautiful job with all of them, of course. The closing number on the program is a, an unusual work by Paul Hindemith from his earlier um, period, and it will be performed by Hana Chang. It's a real, um, it's a wonderful work in so many ways. It has character, it has excitement, it has beauty, it has lyricism. The closing movement is really exciting, like a perpetual motion. And of course, um, I can't wait for you to hear Hana Chang play it. Thank you again to the Violin Channel for your support and for your presentation of this series. It's been a great experience for all of us. We've all learned so very much. Enjoy the concert and join us for the next three nights as well. More great violin solo music. Hi. I'm Jenny, and I'm really excited to share music with you through this challenge. I'm playing Bach Violin Sonata No. 2, and I chose this piece for the project for I have always been in fear of playing Bach. Although I've learned several of his pieces before, I never really had the chance to fully dive in and to overcome my fear. I thought this challenge was a great opportunity, and I tried my best to tackle my fear. I hope you can see it and please enjoy.
studying with Ms. Kavafian at Curtis. I chose to work on Hindemith's sixth sonata for this project. It's not very well known, but it's a beautiful and really exciting piece. I heard it for the first time a couple years ago, and I've been wanting to play it, and this project was a great chance to finally learn it. It was definitely a challenge, but it's been a great experience getting to know the piece, and I really hope you enjoy it. Thank you.
everybody. How are you doing? <laughs> so, um, what a great concert, right? You guys are amazing. I'm so proud of my studio. I'm so blessed to work with all of you. Um, so let's start by talking about um, Jenny's Bach. Um, does anybody have any comments about Jenny's Bach, including Jenny? Jenny, what did you think? Uh, I, I don't know. I had a really hard time recording. Did you? Because, yeah, I think the benefit of recording at home would be like you could redo it like anytime you want. But that was also like the catch for me, and I would just keep redoing it like ten thousand times. <laughs> and, <laughs> uh, and how did you feel about your finished project? I didn't really listen to it. Um, because <laughs> I don't know, I didn't have that many finished products and uh -huh. I don't know. I just chose the one that I played last, I think. Well, do you think it was a learning experience to, to learn a piece like this and that, which was a challenging piece and then to prepare yourself for recording and what, what did you feel about that aspect of it? Um, did you yeah. learn anything about yourself, for instance? Yeah, I talked to you about this in the morning. Um, I felt like I could focus more on my practice sessions because um, when I record, I have a hard time focusing because I feel like, I don't know, it's worse than performing for me, actually. And I think because when I practice, I'm not very used to fully focusing. The focusing part is not really in my system yet, so I think I should work on it. Well, as we were talking about earlier, I think um, you're a very hard worker. Yeah. Um, and I think your method of, of learning is more about um, repeating and making sure that you, you know, do it enough times so that it really becomes um, automatic for you. And so, well, from this point forward, maybe we can work on some good practice habits that, that, um, that will make you use your brain and 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 think more about what you're doing what just you what you just heard and what you can do to improve it before you start to before you repeat it again just as a matter of of just rote right yeah what did you guys think of Jenny's Bob? I I personally really liked it it was it was a, a style of Bach that I it, well, that's not really common in my opinion I wasn't really I didn't really listen to a lot of other people playing that Bach in that specific style, which I thought was really nice. It had Jenny's own personality into it. And I, and she had her own musical ideas that she interpreted really well throughout the entire performance. I, I really enjoyed it. Good. Well, that's good. Um, Hannah, what did you think? I think it sounded really beautiful. And I especially really liked the phrasing, I think it was so creative and very clear. And I always love when you add the ornaments in Bach. I think it's really special. Good. That's great. So Jenny did add some ornaments on her repeat, right? Especially in the Andante, right? Yeah. That's such a beautiful movement. Um, and I thought you did a beautiful job. Very sensitive. Beautiful playing. So now let's move on to Danny. And he played something incredibly challenging. I always thought of the last Isai Sonata as um, kind of, it's, it, everything is packed into a short amount of time. And it's probably has the most uh, challenging technical issues in it. But the advantage, of course, is it's short and it's over in a, in a flash. But um, I think you learned a lot about the process of playing through. Talk a little bit about that, Danny, about how challenging it was to, to string all these tricks together one after another. Right. Uh, for me, when it comes to any piece, not just these, I, the way I like to practice technical parts are just to drill one section and then go to the other one and drill the other section and would more or less not 
have you know have enough practice of running the entire thing through or having those two different passages kind of con connecting to each other and if i'm in a lesson or if i'm playing in studio class it would always feel a little different it's it's very different from you know just drilling one part and then it sounds good after a little bit and then you drill the other one but was never really used to bringing those two or three passages together until I started playing the uh, Is Ice Not Up. That's what you and I worked on a lot. We, you emphasize on how I should have more run throughs in my practice and have more practicing and getting the entire thing done and trying to connect it, connect the dots instead of have separate dots. And it was, it was a really nice experience. It, it is, as you meant, it's hard, not gonna lie or kind of try to go around with it, but it is really hard and, but as you said, it's very short. So that's also a good thing. If the last sonata was, you know, 15, 20 minutes, I don't know if anybody would dare to play it, but. <laughs> if it I, was filled with all those, those difficulties. Right, 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 yeah. right. But um, it's a really fun piece. I had a lot of fun playing it. And I, I personally think that it really matches my style of playing too, in a way. So it was, yeah. it was a great experience. I think one of the things I'm most pleased about in this project is that all of these pieces that you learned are going to become part of your repertoire and a strong part too. And I always say that the pieces that I learned when I was your age are the pieces that I know best, um, that I can, you know, draw back on. Uh, so I think you will always be at an advantage with the repertoire that you chose for this project because it's going to be very, very comfortable and familiar for you. And as I remember, Danny, when you chose this piece, you said something like, well, I might as well choose the hardest one. Right. I'm challenge myself. I'm going to see if I can do it. And, and that's how you came about uh, choosing your, your sonata. So I think it was a great experience for you. Hannah, did you, what did you feel about, um, do you have any comments for, for Danny? Um, I think it sounds amazing. Um, the sonata scares me a lot, so it's very impressive. And I really appreciate the care and attention that you put into every note. I think, yeah. Good. That's nice. How about you, Jenny? How did you feel about it? Um, I thought it was really good. Um, I actually played this before, and I had a really hard time. And I'm really happy that you were able to like really change the normal way of playing his eye. I don't know. Most people just like run through it and I thought it was very unique. Good. Good. Well, that piece was written for um, the great Spanish violinist, uh, Manuel Quiroga. And of course he had a kind of untimely death, but he was a great virtuoso and clearly he's I, um, had him in mind with the oh, Spanish yeah. rhythms. Yeah. I wanted to mention your uh, how I loved your Spanish rhythms before the big break. Yeah. Good. I think you got um, you got a hold of that style very very well. So I was very glad. Um, so overall, what did you think of all of this? Um, all of these challenges. How did they? How did they benefit you during this time? Or we could say the other way. Is that a question for me? Yeah, sure. Um, having having something to work on, having a deadline, having a big deadline that you know that a lot of people, it's like gonna be out in the world, definitely does keep you busy when it's really easy to kind of slack off a lot during quarantine. Uh, I had both up and downs during quarantine. Sometimes I would just be tired. I just get tired for no reason. It didn't, I wouldn't do anything all day, but I would still feel super dead and super tired during quarantine. But this project and this whole idea of, hey, I have to get this ready and by this date was very, it was very helpful for me to stay motivated and you know, do something with the time that I was given instead of kind of wasting it yeah. Yeah. Well, that was certainly my 
hope that it kept all of you um, motivated, inspired. Um, it's difficult for everybody during this time. Um, I was happy that Hannah chose the Hindemith Sonata because for me, um, I knew of the piece and I had heard the piece, but I had never studied it. And so I sort of learned it together with her, with you. So it was a, a special experience for me as well. What do you think is the most challenging part of that piece? Um, for me, I think I'm more of a quiet player and more of like a calm player. So it was really a challenge to be more outgoing and have a lot of energy. And I'm still working on it, but I feel like maybe I pushed myself a little bit and maybe in the future it'll come in handy. Uh-huh. Good. Good points. I think this the whole the whole idea of us challenging ourselves I think was was um was a lot of the the point of the of the project. I think everybody chose a, a work that was particularly difficult for them, you know. Uh, so certainly I think the three of you did. I mean, Jenny, when you chose your Bach, it was, uh, of course, everybody had to choose a piece that they had not played. And so um, it's always challenging to play Bach. And um, you're a very experienced player and you've been playing a long time, but you're still very young, right? 16, are you 16? 17, 17. turn 17, 17, yeah. Okay. Well, that's still very young for for... Um, the depth of, of of repertoire that you play and especially Bach so what did you feel like um, we talked a lot about form and how to bring out um, the right form especially in the fugue um, what did you think what did you think was the the thing that was the most beneficial for you for playing this Bach um, I actually mentioned this in my interview but I've always been scared to play Bach. And I thought um, I had a lot of time to really work on Bach and Bach alone to really kind of overcome my fear. And although I still have a long way to go, I think I'm just really happy that I played Bach because I love a good challenge. That's wonderful. That's a great, that's a great answer. Well, thanks you guys. Bravo for a great concert. And thanks for hanging for the after chat uh and we will go on to the next project i guess right all right bravo everybody bye for now